Hi, welcome to the 33rd Teddy Award. I'm Jean-Bois Bobac. The panorama section of the festival turns 40 years old this year, and on, the, on this occasion, Wieland Speck and Andreas Struck um, created and curated a special Panorama 40 program for the festival, and we're going to discuss this program with the two curators. Hello, welcome to the Teddy Award. Thank you very much for coming and being here with us. Yes, absolutely. Um, so the panorama is 40 years old this year, which is a very nice anniversary and an occasion of that you curated this very special Panorama 40 program, um, which is a massive task. I mean, there are so many films in these 40 years that you could choose from. What was your approach uh, when you did this program? What was the driving force and how did you select the movies? Well, and we did, of course, over the years, several little retrospectives, mm. look backs. Yeah. But um, usually you have an approach that you want to bring back films that were like popular or you, you made popular with your program at the time and have everyone recognize, oh yes, this is um, coming back. Um, this time the decision was rather to look at films that most people probably had forgotten. So it's, uh, we call it Mauerblümchen, uh, films that are very important, have, have been very important for the program, yeah. uh, but uh, are never like conquered the world in that sense. But there are also filmmakers in there who have conquered the world uh, after their first approach. So also of these films we show a few. So it's a combination of films. Uh, there's one strand uh, that is called uh, AIDS, film as a weapon, for yeah. example, where we go to those films, they were made out of anger to fight for a situation that is better. At that time, people died of AIDS, gay people died of AIDS, and nobody did anything because it was only gay people who died. So um, we have these different approaches. First move is uh, filmmakers that started in Panorama and later became famous. Lasse Hallström opened uh, this program. Simon Young is part of it, and uh, Jochen Hick, uh, for example, with all his different range of... He made the first uh, German fiction film on the theme of AIDS. Mm. And we do have also the first fiction film on AIDS per se, which is Buddies. So it was kind of a look into where we come from, where what is the motor of Panorama in order to settle uh, this in the last year of mm. my programming. Um, see. for something for the future. Yeah, when we met in spring, the first, like for me, the key word was obscure. We then said, I want to okay. show obscure films, and I completely fell in love immediately with this key word, because um, to dig out these films which are risk to be forgotten and to rediscover them with the audiences, and what is beautiful to see in our screenings now with the audiences is that they respond to the films in a very vivid way. It's a young generation like Bungalow, you mentioned it, was I asked the audience how many people are going to see the film for the first time. It was two-thirds in the international cinema. It was sold out. Right. So there's a new generation discovering the films. Bungalow is from 2002, but mentioning Buddies from the 80s and a lot of films from the 90s. And we became head of the Panorama and I also joined the team of Panorama. Um, it's, uh, that's a very good experience. And maybe also these films come out now in the cinemas, like Bungalow will come out in the cinemas in May. And other, like Greta Schiller, she digitized her film. Her Johan Casalo, Miss Hirn, is a really obscure film about Russian Orthodox nuns in a remote convent yeah. in northern Estland, in the middle of a pivotal wasteland. Yeah. And um, it's great when they come to life again, thanks to this platform Panorama is. And of course, all these films stand for many, many more. Absolutely. You also aim to present the soul of the program or the spirit of the panorama in a way. How did this idea come about and, and what do you exactly want to capture in that? What do you see well, as the soul? the soul of the program is, of course, what is the motor to do something for such a long time, in yeah. my case, uh, because I never thought I would do anything that long. Uh, why could I do that? Why was I still feeling fresh until like a year ago or so? Um, and uh, that, uh, that is exactly because there are many filmmakers putting out themes, putting out 
aesthetics, putting out political issues that are uh, totally what it is about, why I do this work. So I try to give a sense of... Uh, oh, I rede, I have no thoughts gerade. This is a blah. I'm trying to depict the sense, or the essence rather, uh, with films that are forgotten, showing that the forgetfulness is a major destructive force in culture. Absolutely. And um, we are hunting the newest, the newest, the newest, and basically we're just uh, following a capitalist kind of approach, how to go through life, um, but it's much more important to understand where we're coming from to understand each generation has to understand they're not, they didn't drop from heaven, there was something before. Mm. And uh, that can anchor your, your own existence in order to create something for the future and for the next generation. So having this kind of round is very important uh, for this work because film is the most explicit art form that we have. It is, yeah. And uh, with an explicit art form you also can address situations in, in society. Yeah, and these films also of course speak from the souls of the filmmaker. There's a real mm. urge to do films. Like when we discuss now with the filmmakers we have here in Berlin again, what, how can we, did you come about to make this film? Yeah. It starts with the urge, not with the money. It's not like first I have to collect money here in the festival in the market to make this film and to bring my idea on screen. But there's, there's an urge to tell the story. You meet somebody and you think like Max Uh, like uh, Monika Treut met Max at a time yeah. where he was still Anita, a woman, and then they became friends. And at a later point in her life, she decided this is a this is something I want to bring on screen and share with an audience to make Max trans man visible yeah. to people. So that is that urge. It starts with the urge, and not the money. Yeah, most people in Panorama, most filmmakers, with these obscure films, they have very very little budget. Mm. And that starts with the heart. Yeah. So now we talk a lot about this forgetfulness and what not to forget and how important it was for you to bring back certain movies that might have been overshadowed over the times. Um, and I think the program does a great job in that sense. Um, there were a lot of movies that, for instance, I heard about but I never got the chance to see them and now there is this great opportunity and you can see it on a big screen in a cinema which is again super rare um, and I wonder because for me this program really does justice in the sense of safeguarding a particular cultural heritage and I wonder what what can we do how can something like this continue in the future what what can we do about safeguarding these these films. Well, this is the, the arm of the teddy that reaches beyond the Berlinale is the Queer Academy yeah. and uh, this is uh, definitely one step. Um, there are other initiatives in the US, for example, that follow the same kind of thoughts right. with different measures. Uh, to combine these uh, different elements will be very important. So we need a data bank and we need to write our history in history books, not just like for ourselves. <coughs> Well, because this is the only chance uh, queer people ever had in history to really establish that we existed. Because when you look at history, we don't, we're not there. Yeah. So automatically you get counted out and um, that is another moment that we can use film history for to yes. establish uh, an, a development, a historical development. Mm. Um, the Queer Academy is, a, is more or less a data bank which has this physical moment during the Berlinale where everyone, yeah. everybody comes together, including the Teddy jury and everyone who's involved in queer filmmaking. And this is a chance uh, to again and again establish uh, something that will not go away. Yeah. And Panorama has a lot of attention as a festival platform because the films we screen now are also rediscovered by other smaller festivals now. And I think the festivals around the world, the smaller ones, have to network to work together and to exchange films and bring it to other corners of the world again. And I think uh, this program, it could travel around the world to Asia and to Latin America, wherever. So yeah. I think um, everybody can really work and contribute that films are again seen yeah. after so many years right. and not forgotten. The panorama is also famous for 
being socially very engaged and reflecting on on social issues and social developments. And I wonder because that sort of suggests that you as curators also have a big social responsibility. And I wonder how you dealt with that within your practice over over these years. Well, film is a social power and uh, you deal accordingly. I mean, we, we were establishing the European film market, for example, mm. which is an, an initiative from the curators of the programs. In the 80s, the programmer said, we have to do more for those films that we show, not only have them in the festival, but keep them alive after the festival. And uh, so we created the film market. Uh, the Teddy Award was created with exactly that in mind. We saw the buyers looking at the films that we have in the yeah. program, but they didn't really look at the queer films. So uh, the award for queer film in this festival should also enhance the yeah. attraction for, for buyers to look twice, and especially for media, of course. So um, you try to steer many uh, different levels, and, and, uh, like with the toolbox, you know, like yeah. put the films in the right place and have the accessible for, for the right people in order to create a, a more dynamic life in the cinemas worldwide. Uh, many queer films in, are, that are basically for, for, forbidden to be shown in yeah. many countries. So this is always a theme that you can address again and again and again. Right. And next to the market we have our audiences. And Lila created the Panorama Audience Award 1999, which is super successful because our audiences, maybe also the program Panorama educated the audience because we always invite them to discuss the films with the filmmakers or the protagonists of the filmmakers with the yeah. actors, camera people, everybody working on the film. And the audience, I saw it like I joined Panorama in 1993 and I saw also development. They're really open and they think and maybe they already prepare themselves to really yeah. Yeah, dig into the firms and discuss the firms. And that is something that is a great experience for everyone in the festival, but also for the people making the firms. Yeah. Because that you, you do film and then it goes on and goes out on screen. Usually yeah. in the cinemas, you have no contact with the audience. Yeah. Let's talk a bit about this, because I think this is very um, special about the panorama. It is the section which has an audience award, as you pointed out as well, and indeed it's it's a section that has a really that has really strong ties with the audience, and it and the audience can really feel being part of this program in in many ways. Uh, so I wonder how this whole idea came about, because other festivals it's the the case is different with other sections also, but the panorama really opened its arms towards the audience in a way. Well, this is where we come from. We come from filmmaking, we come from mm. theater uh, making, you know, like uh, cinema. Uh, Hands-on cinema audience, uh, this is our background. So, um, of course, we wanted to exactly also uh, support that in, in our work. And that had created a situation where the audience realized that and the media had realized that and then the suggestion come, came from radio uh, mm. to, to have an audience award and of course I immediately jumped on it uh, yeah. and uh, that's, um, as Andreas said, very successful at this point. Um, more than 30,000 people in these 10 days are voting for that, so of course we're proud of that. Um, and it also helps the films to get a wider audience and, and an audience award is a great thing. I, I got an audience award in 1986 uh, and I realized uh, how good that is for a filmmaker to get an award like this. You know? yeah, so I this imagine. was also the idea to create awards because at that time one said art should not be uh, compared, mm. you know? which is also a thought. But uh, since it's there, not just for us, but also for the films to have a life, um, yeah. I think the decision was good to create some awards. Yeah, definitely. Also, um, I mean, I just noticed that this year there are 24 titles in the Panorama 40, out of which I think like around 15 is queer themed. So there. 70. 17. Yeah, there we go. So it's like there is a really big emphasis on that. And I mean, the whole history of the panorama and the teddy also are hand in hand. It's really a joint endeavor in a 
in, in many ways. So can you tell a bit about this very special relationship that the panorama and the Tadi has with each other and how it developed over, over the years? Well, the, the queer issue was always uh, very important for us. Manfred Salzgeber was one of the queer activists. We didn't say queer in the 70s, we said right. gay. Yeah. And then gay lesbian, and then gay trans, le uh, lesbian trans identical, and then queer made the whole thing shorter again, so the poor people that don't know who we are, they can have a, a word to use. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, queer has also developed other kinds of notations, etc. So it's it's like a subculture, or it's many subcultures um, that are developing approaches, and it's important to to have subcultures um, sitting in their own broth, so to speak, and, and and develop own ideas because this is other ideas that can be later used for wider uh, societal uh, processes. Um, no, we we just enjoyed to um, take on the political energy that was in the queer field of the 70s and transport it into a non-queer world like the Berlinale. Yeah. And that made uh, this program, because I mean we had of course many focuses on, on some uh, environment environmental issues or other issues, Femin yeah. a lot of feminist work from the beginning. Um, but nevertheless, that was a focus we had every year. And this is also why the Teddy was uh, invented in that sense. And uh, Unfortunately, it's still an, an, a lone standing uh, issue, more or less. But the Teddy also had developed uh, quite a few children, so to speak. And so the festival in Cannes in, Ven in Venice in Guadalajara, in Mexico, in Rio de Janeiro. The first one was Kiev, mm. in the Ukraine, in, in something like 97, 98, that also established a queer award in a non-queer festival. So that uh, proves that it's uh, quite a successful idea, and also an idea for activists to be upfront in a world that uh, otherwise would not recognize. Yeah. Right. And queer films are not only films with queer characters or queer stories. Yeah. We have uh, Kusin Erkanov's 100 Days Before the Command, which looks at very young soldiers in the Russian army. Yes. And they are humiliated and they are they will not survive the service in the army. It was shot in 1990, when it was still the Soviet Union. But it's rather the look at these young guys which is queer and this, um, this unspoken lines in between what we see and experience in this film. So it's really a wide spectrum what queer cinema is. And panorama is a wide script. It's 360 degrees, of course. Yeah. So right. there's no question why that is mattering to us. Yeah. I was also wondering how in these 40 years, because in like in a media landscape that's a very long time and in these 40 years the whole cinematic landscape changed drastically um, and how did you deal with those challenges what what was it like for you to to come up with all these new players and, and to respond to all those challenges that these really rapid and fast changes presented it was very nice when I did the Q&A yesterday with Wieland, who presents his second short film, which was mm. selected by Manfred Salzgeber in 1983, right? Mm. At a time when Panorama was the info show, this Geräusch yeah. Rascher Erlösung, the sound of fast relief, I asked him, why did you choose the genre of a silent movie and add all this beautiful, impressive, very intense sound to it? And he just said, yeah. I just had a Bolex camera, it runs for 20 seconds, then you have to rewind. This is like, because you have this means, yeah. you become very creative. If you have one million dollars, you can do everything. It's, yeah, but where, where starts your creative energy? Maybe it starts with having no money, but have something in your heart mm. you want to go for. And uh, now to see the development of all the technology, now everybody can make a phone with a cell phone, with a smartphone, and send it also to the festival. That's why we have so many, many more applications. Right. Also, it's a different it's a different tone when we, we screen some films on 35, you know, like Wasserhaltschrunz film. Awesome. And um, it's, it's different because you see the rain when you change the wheels, and the sound is very, like, 
out. Like Lasse said, how oh, the sound is so like direct and so bold. Mm. Milan said that because he digitized his film. It was right. uh, 16, and yeah. now he saw it the first time on a big screen on DCP yesterday. And he yeah. said the sound is so you understand every word. And it's not about understanding the lines in the film. Um, when I saw the film before, I couldn't really get what was in the Fred, Fred Cinnamon film. He yeah. which is in the film From Here to Eternity. Um, it's a different experience and it's still nice to see this texture of 35 millimeter. Yeah. Right. Um, you mentioned this already briefly that there are some prominent themes um, emerging from the Panorama 40 program. The AIDS crisis or the resistance to patriarchal oppression. Um, was it something that organically emerged from the history of Panorama or was it something that you thought, okay, these are themes that we should focus on in this particular program, in this particular time? Well, I just uh, dived into my brain and came up with a list of films and we discussed the list and Andreas was checking out if these films are available and uh, it was quite, they were all available. quite quickly. Uh, because, I mean, like half of the films are actually digitalized because of the invitation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have this moment right now where films get not only forgotten but also lost. Yeah. So also there we made a, a step that the technical side was all of a sudden available for certain films because of the invitation like yeah. to our festival. It's also an important thought, uh, you know, to not let things slip away. Yeah, but there's never a should. You said at the beginning, like, why, like, the question was, like, why should we show any films? And there's never a should. It's like the, the, the desire to mm. show these films, which are yeah. presenting these films. When you look at Bodies, Arthur J. Bresson did this film at a time where AIDS yeah. was like, coming into the world like a big surprise and bomb and he was he was um, affected by HIV himself yeah. maybe he didn't know in the time when he shot the film but he exposed this uh, terrible disease um, on screen to the to a pu public where he had no support of even maybe not among the queer community um, to show yeah. that and that's a super big uh, courage to put it on screen or if you say see David Wonorovich and Fritz Wickler you yeah. talk about how is it when I meet a guy who is negative, I'm positive, HIV positive, how do I deal with the consequences when I go out with that and, and um, do this experimental form fear of disclosure about it um, at a time when it was completely new to the world. This is different. Yeah. Léonie Fauve, Cyril Collard, who did a film, he was HIV positive and he was the first French artist talking about um, yeah. HIV in France yeah. and uh, he, he was like filming against that disease. This is a film full of fever for, for lust of life and being together also interesting with the queer is so great because bisexual is it like when I, when I did the queer list like we have this G for gay and L for lesbian yeah. and B for bisexual but that <laughs> film Leonie Fauve He's not bisexual, he's not gay, he's not straight, he's everything. And there's a fluidity in identity, yeah. which now in the, in the new films in, in, in the festival, you have a lot of fluidity in, in the identity. But at the time, he was just, he didn't care. He was uh, making out with guys under the bridges of uh, the Seine. At the same time, he fell in love with this beautiful woman, performed by Romain Bourget, and then with this guy. And um, he, was, he just didn't care, it was for nature, it was his nature. The others, they had a lot of problems with it. They wanted to be open, wanted to be free, and they really, they inflame each other. It's a really super yeah. intensive journey, yeah. thing. roller coaster. Yeah. You mentioned both um, this passion of the curator as, as kind of a driving force when, when assembling the program. Is this something that, uh, that you think um, is probably the most just? Um, approach the curator program? Well, everyone does it differently, of course. of course. And I know many, many other programmers and everyone has a different angle. And yeah. So our angle always was to combine the different segments of the audience when I watch a film. Yeah. So I 
am partially the press, I'm partially a buyer, mm -hmm. I'm partially a Berliner, I'm partially someone who comes from somewhere else, who just is, is, is a cineast and wants to watch movies, and uh, of course also programmers of other film festivals. So like all these people are within me plus myself, and then I watch a film and I think this is what we need and this is what we should show and this is what elevates the program and then you go for that. But uh, this is not a recipe, it is just uh, an understanding of how, how much you are a filter between the production mm. volume, which is thousands and thousands of films, yeah. and the core program that you want to deliver which should have a profile and be appreciated, otherwise you're not successful and then you can go after a while. So um, this is my approach, but uh, every curator looks at it differently, I guess. Yeah, this is what I learned from Wieland, because I, he said, we are, he's a filmmaker, I'm a filmmaker, so it's easy to fall in love with a film. It's not easy, the film has to be special and great, but uh, you could fall in love with the film, your heart beats and it's easy to to say for yourself, yeah, I would like to include it in the program. So we travel a lot to Toronto for the festival to, to look for films, which is really, there's so many films and it's very, very heavy to, very difficult to find uh, something which we like for our program. And then I was like so emotional about films, but then he said, no, we have to discuss because we have the audience, we have the market, how, which life will the film have when we program in Berlin, if Toronto was already the premiere, yeah, I learned a lot. So it's every creator, of course, works different. But I think we start not with the brain, not with the. Um, it's it starts with um, also the urge to bring something on screen. If you don't do it as a filmmaker, you can do it as a creator, and you can also make the films talk to each other. Yeah, like we have these three double programs when we sh uh, when we saw the attendant again, the short film by Isaac Julian, where he brings to life a painting of a 19th century about imperialistic violence and turns it into a group of leather guys. This, I remember I was even working on the film, there were these paintings of the 19th century, but I didn't remember there were also drawings of Tom of Finland in the film. And then we show Daddy and the Muscle Academy, um, the only film Tom of Finland talking about his history and his needs to bring his in intimate feelings on, on, on paintings and pictures and drawings. And we discovered Isaac Julian, we discovered Isaac Julian is in the film. So we said that's a really great match because yeah. this film mm. talked together. Yeah, that's, that's very true because the films in the Panorama 40, they definitely have a nice conversation with each other, not just yeah. with the audience, but they sort of yeah. talk to each other as well. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk a bit about the Teddy we sort of looked back at the history of it, how it all started. Um, we are right now in the in the present of it. Um, how do you imagine, or what do you hope for <coughs> for the Teddy in the future? Well, basically, the need for the Teddy is dictated by the world situation for queer people, and uh, that is not a good situation. Um, it has gotten better in many places, even the awareness, it's yeah. at least, um, you have less cultures who pretend that queer people are aliens, they're coming from the outside to disturb and destroy. <laughs> yeah. um, the understanding that the regular society is producing queer people at one generation after the other is more or less sinking in in many cultures and that is the first step to have also uh, to find respect and, 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 and human rights because that's what it is about. There are special laws against uh, queer yeah. people. It's not that, there's, that they want special laws but there are special laws against. So um, all these things to, to reflect um, is of course happening also in the Teddy Jury, it's happening in the people that come because of the queer focus to Berlin, that's the Queer Academy, in the end of the day uh, we have discussions, we also have some panels and, and, and uh, networking so we can help each other in the different yeah. segments of, of, of societies where it's difficult and, or in others it's already commercial, you know, so you have yeah. these contradictions and you all have to deal with these yeah. 
And the Teddy is an icon for the world, like for all other festivals recreating Queer yes. Awards. I just uh, met a programmer from the Singapore International Film Festival and I said, how can we bring more queer films to uh, Singapore? Because we have authorities who say no to some films. Yeah. And she says, yeah, I want to create a queer award at the festival. So the, the Teddy is an icon for yeah. all corners of the world. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here with You're us welcome. and answering thank you so much all these to you questions. And it was, the whole team of the Teddy It board. was amazing. And I just want to say thank you really in the whole, in the name of the entire Teddy team for your amazing work and for this program that really, again, shifted very important focus on, on queer teams and queer cinema. So we're, thank you so we're much. We're in it together. We're in it together, yeah, that's true. Thank together you. Together is the word, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you.